The romanticized image of the Old West often conjures visions of rugged cowboys, vast landscapes, and a sense of adventure. However, the reality of life in the 19th century American frontier was harsh, unforgiving, and would likely be a formidable challenge for individuals accustomed to the conveniences of the modern world. In this video, we will explore several reasons why you wouldn't survive life in the Old West. Life in the Old West was hard. The trials we grapple with today pale in comparison to the hardships endured in the Wild West. At the time, many people lost lives beginning from when they were immigrating to the Old West. Regrettably, the situation grew even more dire due to the eruption of diseases like cholera, measles, smallpox, and dysentery, causing a staggering loss of lives. On top of that, the risk of dying violent deaths was astronomically high, making people flee or live in fear. What do you think? Would you have survived in the Wild West based on the tricky and dangerous circumstances? It's conceivable that many might have been enticed by the prospect of living during that period, but that's if you are the kind who would put up with the dangers that existed. Mining was unbelievably dangerous. Commencing with the renowned California Gold Rush of 1849, mining operations started popping up across the West. According to the Independence Hall Association in Philadelphia, more and more precious metals were found, until miners weren't just looking for gold, they were also looking for fortunes in silver, copper, lead, and zinc. These metals held pivotal roles in propelling the nation's rapidly advancing industries. Pierce Mullen, a Montana State University professor emeritus of history, says it quickly became clear just how many ways there were to die in mining. The hazards spanned from mine collapses and explosions to treacherous falls down ladders extending hundreds of feet. Fatigue emerged as a significant factor in the perilous circumstances alongside the issue of sanitation. Miners frequently dwelled in densely packed communities that became breeding grounds for diseases. Their water sources were tainted not only by unsanitary living conditions, but also by the runoff from the mines themselves. The understanding of the multitude of risks miners faced only began to solidify at the onset of the 20th century, as documented by True West magazine. Medical professionals started grasping the reasons behind the prevalence of lung-related ailments like tuberculosis among miners. The root cause often lay in silicosis, a condition arriving from inhaling dust laden with silica. If silicosis didn't lead to sudden and premature demise, numerous other threats loomed. These encompassed the likes of carbon monoxide poisoning, the loss of a few fingers or limbs, infections, and exposure to toxic elements such as mercury and arsenic. Ladies of the Night There were plenty of cold nights in the Old West, prompting many men to seek companionship in the arms of what were commonly referred to as painted ladies or soiled doves, terms synonymous with prostitutes of that era. Christopher Knowlton, author of Cattle Kingdom, The Hidden History of the Cowboy West, he took a look at the prostitute industry. Once women got into the industry, there was little to no chance of getting out. Tragically, most met untimely deaths exacerbated by factors like disease, addiction, and destitution. As historian Michael Rudder aptly noted, this line of work never offered a favorable retirement plan. Historical sources like Medicine in the Old West reveal a troubling reality. An estimated 50% of people in the West grappled with some form of venereal disease, a predicament that could be transmitted to their clients. Despite attempts at precaution, the repeated use of solutions containing hazardous chemicals like mercury, carbolic acid, mercuric cyanide, and boric acid inevitably posed grave risks. 
Determining the toll of venereal diseases is complicated by the fact that death certificates often attributed the cause of death to something other than the actual ailment. Late-stage syphilis, for instance, could lead to symptoms that were inaccurately classified as cancer of the brain on death certificates due to the decay it caused. Excessive Alcohol Use the perils of excessive drinking are extensively documented, and in the Old West, it wasn't just that they were drinking, but how much. A revealing insight from True West magazine highlights the not uncommon sight of teenagers sharing drinks with adults in saloons. According to Arizona's official historian, Marshall Trimble, it was common for individuals to fall into a state of severe alcoholism before reaching even 16, an alarming contrast to contemporary standards. However, it's not just about age, but quantity. A retrospective exploration of America's historical relationship with alcohol, as conducted by Paste, sheds light on practices dating back to the 1700s. Historian W.J. Rohrabaugh reveals a culture where individuals of all ages, including toddlers who would finish their parents' leftover sips, were starting the day with a breakfast drink and ending with a nightcap. Alcohol use reached a peak in the 1800s, likely attributed to bountiful corn harvests and the lucrative transformation of corn into whiskey. In essence, everyone was drinking all the time, and by 1830, intake was astronomical. To contextualize, adhering to the drinking habits of the 1830s today would equate to consuming a staggering 3.5 bottles of whiskey each week, an alarming proposition. Research drawn from the book Alcohol and Opium in the Old West underscores how drinking had evolved into an accepted leisure activity. When the cycle of abuse and addiction culminated in the emergence of the temperance movement and pro prohibition. The ingredients in your cocktail might kill you. Surviving certain days often calls for the solace of a relaxing cocktail, yet even such libations could prove perilous in the Old West. While popular Western portrayals frequently depict cowboys and outlaws nonchalantly ordering whiskey at the local saloon, historical accounts reveal a more sinister reality. Beyond the realm of locally brewed beers and traditional whiskey, establishments like saloons were known to serve concoctions with the names like the ominous tarantula juice. This libation had a dark side, often leading to violence due to the inclusion of the lethal and hallucinogenic strychnine. The name itself invoked shivers, as frequent imbibers reported sensations akin to being swarmed by crawling spiders. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention emphasizes the potency of strychnine. Even minute qualities could trigger poisoning and death, a rather unsettling prospect. However, strychnine wasn't the sole dubious substance making its way into alcoholic beverages. Many saloons were driven by a desire to maximize liquor supplies and boost profits. This meant that numerous saloons diluted their liquors, serving patrons a potentially lethal blend of spirits infused with turpentine and even ammonia. Death of Many Native Americans When discussing death in the Old West, it's necessary to indicate that people affected the most. Native Americans who had lived for generations on their land died in great numbers. While precise figures are elusive, history suggests that North America was home to an estimated 5 to 15 million people when Christopher Columbus sailed up. However, by the conclusion of the 19th century, their numbers had dwindled to fewer than 238,000. It's both complicated and challenging to explain what exactly happened. However, some significant causes were involved in those massive deaths. History suggests that smallpox was among the essential contributors to those countless deaths. 
a sequence of conflicts, including the Battle of Tippercanoe, the War of 1812, and the Seminole Wars, inflicted further reductions in numbers. These were compounded by outright massacres, such as the Sand Creek Massacre. Additionally, forced relocations like the Trail of Tears exacted a heavy toll. This chapter, unfolding in the 1830s, resulted in the deaths of thousands of Native Americans. They were coerced from their ancestral territories and subjected to a journey spanning over a thousand miles to reach the designated lands assigned by the U.S. government. In essence, the Native Americans who managed to survive the challenges of the Old West were the exception, standing against a grim norm. There were lots of murders. If you watched any Hollywood Western movie, you would understand that dead bodies were lying everywhere. Everyone was forced to flee or make do with the killings. No one was safe in the Wild West. But does this portrayal align with reality? Not really. Terry Anderson, a Montana State University professor emeritus of economics, told Live Science that the movies exaggerate some of the incidences in the Wild West. Further, he indicates that as much as people settled disputes with bullets, there were many instances where people solved issues using civil measures. Let's take Dodge City during the boom years. During the span of 1876 to 1885, inhabitants faced a 1 in 61 chance of meeting a violent demise. Their homicide rate stood at approximately 165 per 100,000 individuals. While that doesn't sound like much at all, let's put it in perspective. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the 2020 homicide rate was around 7.8 per 100,000, a stark increase from preceding years. Oregon boasted the lowest homicide rate, roughly 30 per 100,000. Therefore, dying a violent death was real, and people lived with constant fear. The cures were more dangerous than the diseases. Historian David Derry authored Frontier Medicine, a book that delved into the unsettling reality of being a physician in the Old West, an experience that brought challenges for both medical practitioners and their patients. Derry revealed that doctors often improvised their methods, prescribing remedies that sometimes exacerbated ailments more than they cured them. Tragically, even while valuable insights were available, such as the medical wisdom of Native American tribes, many white doctors dismissed these resources. For those who fell ill or suffered injuries, there were essentially three courses of action. Awaiting the arrival of a doctor, if one could be located, attempting to manage their own afflictions, or resigning themselves to their fate. In cases where a doctor was present, treatments like bloodletting were common, and even the consumption of leeches posed an ordinary issue. Furthermore, unconventional remedies like the 1815 cure for arthritis and gout existed. It's unsurprising that many turned to self-administered treatments for chronic maladies. One such individual was Doc Holliday. According to Forrest Tennant, Doc Holliday resorted to self-medicating with opium and alcohol when tuberculosis afflicted him. While he lived longer than expected, he was also regularly coughing up chunks of his lungs. Disease was rampant. When Dr. Jim Kornberg directed his attention to the fastest killer in the Old West, Within the pages of True West magazine, the culprit wasn't a gunshot, it was cholera. After all, a bullet possesses limited lethality, whereas cholera proves to be an enduring scourge. In 1873 alone, a major cholera epidemic swept through the West, and at this point in history, the medical community understood exactly how it was spread. Dr. John M. Woodworth's extensive 1,144-page report submitted to Congress 
concluded that comprehensive disinfection was the pivotal strategy. Regrettably, disinfectants were scarce commodities in the West, and people kept dying. According to the National Park Service, ailments like measles, scurvy, dysentery, pneumonia, and smallpox were also prevalent. Smallpox, as per historical accounts, arrived in the Americas through Spanish contact and subsequently, along with other European diseases, claimed the lives of approximately 90% of indigenous populations across North and South America. These communities faced harrowing extremities, as exemplified in a narrative recounted by historian David Derry. In 1878, a newspaper documented an incident involving an Apache medicine man who, upon diagnosing two infants with smallpox, placed them back to back and, with a single bullet, ended both of their lives. You were lucky to reach the Wild West. Surviving in the American West required a journey fraught with peril as reaching the destination often meant overcoming the odds of death. During the years of 1840 to 1860, an estimated 300,000 to 400,000 pioneers embarked on the Oregon Trail. Among them, the National Park Service says that one in ten died before they reached the Promised Land. The path to the West was marked by a startling array of mortality sources, Predominant causes included diseases, mishaps, calamities induced by weather, perishing while traversing the numerous rivers en route, and, of course, gunshot wounds. Yet, those were just the prominent threats. Additional hazards loomed. Rattlesnake bites could turn deadly, and bison roamed abundantly. Stampeding herds could swiftly overrun wagon trains, and indeed they did. The animals accompanying the convoy posed significant dangers as well. Most groups journeyed alongside their own herds, comprising oxen, horses, and mules. Equestrian accidents were not the sole peril. People also fell victim to kicks and stampedes. Among the most heart-rending demises were those who tumbled from wagons, encountering crushing wheels or trailing mercilessly behind. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.